uh, let's move now to uh, more specifically the data that is managed by the hardware and the software and how to protect it. So video can be encrypted in transit and at rest. In fact, starting in Security Center 5.8, video is encrypted in transit by default and the keys are managed by the system automatically. This means that as soon as the video enter the security center system, it will be encrypted until the operator desk, basically, until the operator sees it. However, the first link between the camera and the archiver is not encrypted. This is what we discussed on the, on the last section, how to secure this first segment. It is also possible to do uh, encryption at rest. This means that the encryption uh, of the video will be, uh, will be done when the video is stored on the disk. This would protect the confidentiality of file if the archiver hard drive gets stolen, for example. Or it will also protect the video files if you were to put Security Center in the cloud and you wouldn't want your cloud provider um, to get access to those files. The trade-off for this added security is that you need to manage the key yourself. The system don't manage the key automatically in this uh, encryption at rest scenario. So how to do this uh, in Security Center? The, the, the choice is pretty, uh, is pretty straightforward to do. Basically, if you select a unit and you go in the recording uh, tab, you see that you have an encryption options, none, uh, but the default one is now encryption from the archiver, like I said. Uh, if you select the in transit, you need to manage the certificate. That means uh, you need to have some certificates in your Windows Store. You select the one that you want to use, uh, click OK, and then you need to manage the key, basically putting the private key of this certificate um, on the machines that will decrypt the video. So in practice, our customers are doing this uh, simply by using uh, Active Directory most of the time. We can talk about data protection without talking about databases. In terms of, uh, of security, we can also divide this between that data in transit and data at rest. So uh, most uh, roles that have um, that, that that, that are in Security Center, in fact, they, they use a database. It, they, it's true for the archiver. So in that scenario, you will see a, a, a section like this called data security. Why? Because uh, encryption at, in transit, so between the archiver and the database, is done by default since Security Center 5.8. This is the toggle that you see here. The little catch, however, is that the certificate of the SQL server won't be checked automatically. Why? Because uh, it's not uh, feasible to do it uh, automatically. It needs human uh, intervention. So we explain how to do this in the hardening guide. Uh, if you follow the steps, you'll be able basically to turn on validate certificate. So you'll have a stronger security, stronger uh, protection in that scenario. For the uh, encrypting uh, video at rest, uh, this is done via the SQL TDE or Transparent Data Encryption feature. Security Center will encrypt the most sensitive content like user password or device password. But if you want to encrypt the entire content of the database, you need to use uh, SQL uh, data encryption. Another way to protect the integrity of your video is by using a digital signature. Uh, this can be done without or with video encryption, so it's really two different things. The idea of digital signature uh, is mostly that when you want to bring video footage as evidence in a court of law, you want to demonstrate the chain of custody. So this allows to do this, uh, that, uh, that to, to prove that the video hasn't been tempered from the time it was recorded until the time it was played. So it's good for those scenarios, but it also makes sense to turn it out all the time because the, the costs, uh, the performance costs, they aren't uh, significant. 
So, uh, so most customers leave it on uh, those days. Now, uh, when video footage becomes of importance, it is typically uh, it typically needs to be exported outside of the system where it was recorded. The confidentiality and integrity of the footage still needs to be protected, even in this case uh, where the potential of attacks is increased. Security Center offer mul offers multiple ways of doing this. The first possibility is to encrypt the exported video using the vault. So the vault is a tool uh, you have uh, in, in the security desk. Basically, you can export your, uh, your, your video sequence here. Once they are in the vault, you can right click on them and then basically click uh, encrypt file, like uh, we'll see. What this does is ask you for an encryption key that you need to, to type. The system will not remember it, but will use it to encrypt the actual video file that is in the vault. Once the process is done, the extension of the file will change uh, and the, the video will be uh, encrypted. So, of course, you need the same decryption key to be able to decrypt uh, the, the same video sequence. A much better way to export and manage evidence in a secure way and to comply with uh, privacy regulation is to use clearance and integrate it in Security Center via the uh, clearance plugin. So this will export the video sequence in an encrypted fashion, as well as the metadata that can be associated with it. You basically create a case uh, for which you add uh, some metadata, for example, the category of the event, uh, and then you can uh, export this whole content inside of clearance. Now, clearance is kind of a, you know, a presentation by itself, but what it does is manage evidence uh, in, a, in a secure and uh, audited way, and its strengths come with uh, sharing it uh, with, with, with stakeholders. So you can use this link between Security Center and Clearance to increase the ease of use uh, and, uh, and guarantee the, uh, the change of custody during this transition. 